die. And it's not exactly there, well. What have we got behind us? Sochi. Sochi. Some fads we go past is like tiny little, I don't know, maybe as big as this cockpit. Um, and they're just kind of got all sorts of stuff hanging off them. And the concept is that uh, below those ones are anchored, you know, way out in the middle of nowhere. Like these ones are all at least around land masses. But the ones that are anchored out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, um, the reef kind of builds up below them and then, it, you know, you're out in the middle of with not much life but because a reef grows along the rope and along whatever's anchored at the bottom it attracts sea life it attracts smaller fish which in turn attracts bigger fish um, so those ones I don't necessarily think people are going to live on they're just fish attracting devices these ones look more like an establishment that, yeah platform. like a platform that people come out to fish at and live on we're in 12 meters of water here I think it's low-ish tide lower than it was when we came in yesterday so these things aren't out in super deep water like the ones we've seen in God. Haven't we seen them in like, you know, 800 meters of water or something? Yeah. Yeah, crazy. They're everywhere. Everywhere here. Like, the whole horizon. Yes. 360 view. Everywhere. everywhere. So we'll try and get super close to it. It's hard to tell, but we're like kind of by this little sand patch, just behind this little sandbar. It's a little bit windy at the moment. Um, but in the distance is the island of Bunker, uh, which is the island north of Belitung. And I think there's a big port over there, so there's reception, cell phone reception. So we came here specifically to be far away from land, but close enough that we can still get cell reception to upload our Patreon video. Yeah, it's just like a really relaxed morning. Um, we haven't been for a swim here, probably should for a little dip and then I think we're leaving either this afternoon or tonight I have decided I've just you know ha I often do this I decided that there's something I want to eat and at the moment I feel like making bliss balls so that like, you know the little yummy protein balls or nut with nuts and coconut oil and whatever so that's what I'm gonna do uh, so I'll take you down and run you through how I'm gonna just wing it because I always wing stuff like this I love absolutely love a good wing Wednesday. Wings Wednesday. So in here I have raw cacao. So cacao is the unprocessed, unrefined version of cocoa. I have desiccated coconut. And here I've just in the blender blitzed up some hazelnuts. So hazelnut meal, coconut, cacao. 
then to that I'm going to add some rice milk syrup so that's fructose free I'm going to add some peanut butter dates the dates are a little bit old so the first thing I'm gonna do is soak them in boiling water just to bring them back to life for like maybe 10 minutes so I just added a little bit of salt to the dry mixture and then I'm just going to mix all that around. So in this bowl I have a little bit of peanut butter, uh, rice milk syrup, you can use honey if you want, um, and coconut oil. And that's just going to be a bit of a binding agent along with the dates once they're finished soaking. If any nuts you want to, you can use almonds or cashews or walnuts or pecans. Okay, so we've got the uh, date pits here and the soaked dates that I think I'm probably going to have to blitz so I probably have to put them in the in the blender just to get a bit of a smooth paste and then we'll add the two wet ingredients to the dry ingredient and we'll see how it tastes again I'm just winging this which is what I do with most recipes so it could be a complete disaster World's stickiest fly here. Oh, wait, oh my god, I got him. That's my ninja skills. That's how good my fly ninja, ninja skills are. I just got him. Bye. Okay, so the mixture was a little bit uh, wet, so I just added some more dry ingredients. So I just added some more coconut, and then they're kind of good to roll into a ball now. So I'm just going to coat them in coconut. And it was daddy who got drowned out in We did a lot of editing and um, admin work today, so the batteries are a bit low. We, we're running, we're charging everything off the inverter. So I just thought I'd give you an update on our generator because this is where it comes in handy when you're running two laptops. Um, each has its own hard drive and then charging camera batteries, charging a drone, charging your iPad. And then on top of that, a water pump and a fridge. like definitely need a gen set so just thought I'd let you know that we're loving it because she's running out here you probably couldn't hear it until I came out here I noticed um, when we had the hatches open that all the fumes were coming into that into the boat and it's not good um, we get enough fumes when we're motoring along with the diesels with the wind behind us so the plan is guys so in between Bellatung and Linga, or North Banker, there isn't much in the lines of anchoring. So, to try and do day sails, which is kind of critical here because of all the fads and all the fishing activity, you kind of don't want to be sailing around here for too long at night. So, um, we're going to try tomorrow morning, get up early, and we're going to try get to North Banker. If we don't make it in time, then we're going to have to continue on um, to the southern part of, of the Riau Linga group of islands. So, yeah, that's just what the plan is at the moment. Um, I don't think it, we, we'd have to be fully motivated to get to North Banker um, in a day. And I've read that there's a lot of they're called needle rocks, which are, aren't on the charts and. They're kind of exactly what they sound like. They're rocks that just poke straight up from the sea floor, or from 20 meters straight up to you know a meter depth or whatever it is. We want to avoid hitting any of those. So if we can come into an anchorage at daytime, that's how we would avoid that. So that's the plan. So 
So this boat's what, like 24 years old or something, and it's still good. It's 24, 20, it's a 1996 boat. Still got its original mainsail with the Island Packet logo. It certainly needs replacing, but it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of sweet that it still has its original mainsail. A few little repairs in there, but... We've done a few, yeah. We've done a few ourselves. <laughs> We're just waiting until we pass this landmass here. Uh, until we decide whether or not we're going to put the head sail up as well. Um, we have 16 knots of wind on the beam apparently. doesn't really feel like that though. And yeah, we're um, kind of on high alert through here because there's some shallow patches as well as heaps and heaps of fads. Sunrise is beautiful though. Hey do. Yeah. But there's this like, along with all the fads floating everywhere, there's like, I don't know, a floating construction site, it kind of appears. Yeah, it looks like a village of something. It looks sort. like a metal village on the water. I don't know, maybe it's, um, maybe they're, uh, like, it's a gas, it's like an oil oh, maybe, rig or... Maybe an oil rig or something. Could be, but it looks like there's like cranes and, and it seems like out from the mainland. So, got a bit choppy there for a bit. Um, woo! 25 knots of wind. And I don't know what's going on with this sea state. It's a bit, a bit all over the place. But everything's falling over downstairs. You would think we would have learned our lesson from last time. Put a reef in the main, and then we unfurled the head sail to about three quarters. Just don't want to overdo it. The old technology saying we'll get there at 4.30 so looks like we will be sleeping at an anchorage tonight. Dodging those um, fads for the whole morning. Hate to come out here at night time. They're just everywhere. We saw some sticks like right near one of the fads sticking straight up like like that. So if you were to come along with your boat at night time they're pointing like directly up so you'd probably it'll probably just drive straight up into your boat. Pretty shit shit sail really. We went into the wind to to reef the mainsail and it just got wild and the kombucha was flying out everywhere. The pot plant was falling over. All the cupboards had all their shit come out of them and it's just been a bit of a shitty morning. It gets you in a bad mood and it's hard to get back out of it when you're rocking and rolling and stuff. My whole batch of kombucha spilled everywhere and it was almost ready to bottle up for its second ferment as well. So everywhere, like it sits on a counter above the kitchen and it like spilled all over the kitchen bench, all over the back counter, down into the um, starboard side uh, hull, everywhere. Um, absolutely devastated when stuff like that happens when you're underway in, in uncomfortable sea state it is not all bikinis and all sunsets and all cocktails in fact it's hardly any of those things you are living your life on the sea and it's unpredictable it's always unpredictable and I should know better I should always doesn't matter how calm I think the sea state's gonna be I should always put everything away but I didn't and I learned my lesson again. How many times do I have to learn the same lesson? I feel like it's been a bit doom and gloom in all of our recent episodes lately. There's always been something going wrong. But it's the truth to this lifestyle. Most of it is amazing, but it is life nonetheless. So it comes with a multitude of stress. In fact, possibly more stress than just going to work every day. There's a lot going on. You know, your, your house is moving constantly. It's under strain, it's under pressure. Things are breaking. Anyway, I read a lot of this book today, the one I was looking forward to reading, before I knew the day was gonna turn into a, the morning was gonna turn into a disaster. It's really good. It made better time than we thought we would. We thought we'd get in at 6 p.m., but we've been doing six knots all day. 
the main sails down now and we're just running with the head sail. We're about to come into Anchorage. I'm gonna take this sail down. The wind's coming from straight in there, so it's not a lee shore, it's the opposite. So we're pretty good. Um, there's been some weird little patches of reef and rocks and stuff out here, so look at this. Whatever that is, something's floating midway. It's the boys going out for their nightly fish. Whee! This is our terrible job of us packing away our mainsail. <laughs> to these places it's always really interesting to see of an afternoon how the place comes alive with fishermen. Hello! Yeah just like everyone's coming out in their boats and their little skiffs. Everyone's coming out from the shoreline zigzagging across the bays and I mean that's how all these people make their income. Be a nice anchorage, but it's got muzzies. So look, look at this. This is what boat life's actually like. Can you put these out in the cockpit while while you interview me about today's events? So we've pulled out every little little drawer because it just got inside everything, um, and Lauren's just wiped completely wiped out every little drawer. All of our drawers, all of our cutlery covered in, drawer. and um. And yeah, so you might notice how still it is here and how quiet it is. So nice. So good. So good to have an anchorage after the last three that have been just rocking and rolling and bang, bang, bang. And then you pull up to somewhere like this and it's just fully protected and it's just so quiet. So we just uh, we just cracked the kombucha and I cracked the lid and it was like this eruption from deep underneath inside the middle of the bottle it just started foaming and this thing just started coming up and I'm like ah oh! turn the thing turn it straight back to tighten it back up and then now I'm trying to release pressure and, ooh because there's just so much in there look at that look at look look oh it's gonna be so bubbly and delicious. But like, I don't know if the glass bottle can hold that much pressure. I don't know if you should be putting that in there. Of course it can. It's a glass bottle. It's fine. Yeah, but like this thing, like you could hear, you could feel the pressure. I could feel it in the bottle. Like, like, a, like when a... I would ting it on the side of the fridge, bring it out, it was like, oh, it's a weird noise. It's not like any normal. <laughs> it's like it had that much pressure. Where you just go, bang! One time you put kombucha in. No, it was, I was trying to make apple cider. Apple cider vinegar in the cupboard and then... And then you left it for too long. I was making my own. You were making your own. She was making her own apple cider vinegar and um, she left in there for a bit too long and <laughs> it just went everywhere in the kitchen. It exploded overnight. But Lauren woke up and it, it was just like this dry, sticky film on the bench. It wasn't even like wet everywhere. <laughs> on the floor, you Wally. Where, where do your memories come from? It was just sticky everywhere and then it was from that. So, oh. Look at, from the deep, <laughs> from the deep down under. Little, just little bits at a time, I think. Yeah, you just have to let it, remember? Oh. Oh. Yeah, this is too much. Will this build up pressure once we put it back in the fridge again? No, that's, a, that's the annoying thing. I don't think so, it kind of loses it. Oh, well why we'll don't just, we just... No, we'll just pour it out of glass. Enjoy your glass. Can I put gin with this? Yeah, of course you can put I'm gin. I'm having gin with this. <laughs> well, it's ginger and turmeric kombucha. See, see, there we go, we're getting there. I'm just gonna slowly let that go. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. 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 Oh wow. We're it's losing it. We're losing. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> How we stop this? So it, much. This bottle was about to blow. I could hear it, Lauren. <laughs> I can hear it. It was like, doom, like, oh like, like cracking almost. It's really good. Is it? I bet it is. Of course it's good. I made it. Still, if I take this off, <laughs> it's still going to have come out like a fountain. Is it? Yeah. Well, at least we can drink it. Slow. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> uh, he keeps me entertained. <laughs> Thanks for sitting through another long episode. And again, let us know how you feel about the longer videos. Is 20 minutes too long? Next week, it's boat chores and town runs in the anchorage of North Banker. Sailing Blue Moon videos are made possible by our patrons and viewers just like you. If you'd like to support our content creation while receiving perks in return, you might consider becoming a patron. Or maybe you'd just like to buy us a beer or donate to the Sailing Kitty via PayPal. Every little bit counts and we'll be sure to give a shout out. Speaking of, thanks again to Corey Brown for your endless support. If you enjoy our content, you can help us out by liking this video and subscribing if you haven't already. Don't forget to click the bell to the right to be notified of new episodes. We'd also love to hear from you, the viewer, so hit us up in the comments below. And lastly, you can follow us in real time on Instagram and Facebook. As always, thanks for watching Blue Moonies.